Hey there, Ken Hammer fans. Welcome to your source for 40K from the Great White North. Contrary to what uh, the uh, Basement Collective people believe. <laughs> uh, welcome to Read Along, and I've got in front of me the Blood Angels Codex. Now, disclaimer, I don't know nothing about Blood Angels. I've uh, never been a Blood Angels fan. I don't like the whole vampire thing. I've never read a lot of their fluff, although I'm aware of a lot of it. And I don't know uh, much about them in terms of Index Blood Angels. Uh, so I'm reading this from a fresh, kind of new Codex point of view without a lot of previous baggage. So um, that's the perspective I'm coming from for this Codex. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors, uh, Martin at Wargames and Dylan at Multizone. And uh, let's get right to it. So it's a decent sized codex for a, a kind of a single faction codex that doesn't have a lot of other sub factions, it's just Blood Angels. Um, so it's decent. And there's a picture of uh, Blood Angels on the back with some new Primaris. Well, mostly Primaris actually. And uh, here we go. So I've heard a lot about the Blood Angels. They seem like an exciting, fluffy, and strong book. So let's see what the uh, fuzz is all about. All right, so I'm not going to read through all the fluff, obviously, but I might at some point because it's kind of interesting and I'm thinking of picking up that book that recently came out, The Devastation of Baal. And then that's the other thing. How do you think Baal is pronounced? Is it Baal or is it Bale or is it some other pronunciation? In my experience with the English language anyway, double A is like ah, like boss or moss, but uh, maybe that doesn't apply to 40k language, I don't know. So uh, comment below how you think it's pronounced, but uh, there we go. Certainly it's a very thematic uh, chapter, if you like that sort of thing with the rage and the vampiric origins and you know, in my, when I've read books involving Sanguinius is a little bit broody and emo for me, but obviously it appeals to a lot of people. So I'm going to skip all this. I also don't like painting red. <laughs> All right, so the rules start on page 74 out of uh, 144. So as usual, it's just about half, uh, which has been for most of the codexes. Um, so of course, the keyword is Blood Angels, and there's successor chapters. And um, their common abilities are they shall know no fear, like all Space Marines, and they have the Black Rage. Uh, so let's go out of interest. Let's go to the index here for Blood Angels. Uh, let's see what their uh, Blood Angels was before. Raymond Guard, White Scars, Blood Angels. Okay, so Black Rage before was add one to attacks characteristic in the fight phase if it charged and roll a d6 every time so they get a 6 plus feel no pain. So the Black Rage used to be plus one attack if you charge and a 6 plus feel no pain. So now the Black Rage is add one to your attacks if you charge or are charged, add one to this unit's attack characters for the duration of the fight phase if it's charged. Oh, so it's just if it's charged. And roll a d6. So it hasn't changed, in fact. So um, Black Rage is the same as it was in the index. And uh, here's their uh, weapons list. And then uh, we're straight on to it. So I'm not going to go through every single um, data sheet. You can certainly have a look here. Um, to see if there's been any significant changes um, and I'll stop long enough so you can have a look. The Sanguinor, there you go. It's a kind of a funny model but uh, so let's just talk about a few of these guys. So Dante of course is the chapter master and he's uh, usually surrounded by a sanguinary guard. He's got a chapter master rule, of course, and he has the death mask, which minus one leadership to everybody within three inches. He has a four plus invuln and the jump pack assault. And he has the ax, which is strength six, basically minus three D3 characters, reroll wounds against uh, characters. 
Um, he's pretty expensive for one out here. We'll check his points in a second. Gabriel Seth is uh, Flesh Terrors. Of course, he's the head of the Flesh Terrors, which is a like, sub-faction, I guess, of Blood Angels. He has Chapter Master Rule as well, 4 plus Vulnerable Save, and Lord of Slaughter. So, a D6 each time Flesh Terrors unit finishes within 6 inches of Gabriel Seth. Uh, when it consolidates, it can immediately fight again. So that's pretty sweet, but it has to be close into the guys. Whirlwind of Gore on a 6 plus, you make an additional hit. So it's decent if you're playing Flesh Terrors. Brother Corbulo, which I guess is a uh, Sanguinary Priest. So let's see, Brother Corbulo, Far Seeing Eye. You can reroll a single dice once per turn, made for Brother Corbulo. And he has the Red Grail. Blood Angels, Infantry, and Biker units increase their strength by one when they're within six inches of any Sanguinary Priest. So that's pretty sweet, increasing strength by one. In addition, each time you make a hit roll of six, uh, within six inches of him, immediately make another close combat attack. So it's got exploding sixes. And the Narthesium, of course, lets it uh, resurrect models within three inches of him or heal. Pretty cool. Uh, of course, your uh, standard Sanguinary Priest has the Narthesium as well. So the priests are their uh, apothecaries, basically. And they have this Blood Chalice. Uh, they all have this Blood Chalice, which gives plus one strength. So the only difference between him and Brother Corbulo, other than stats, is the extra exploding sixes, basically. And the weapon. Okay, Mephiston is their librarian. Um, so I'm not completely without knowledge of uh, Blood Angel's fluff, but... So Mephiston is uh, it's pretty decent. He hits on twos. Uh, strength is five, and toughness is five. What, is he a uh, Terminator or something? No, even Terminators don't have toughness five. Okay, Mephiston's just extra tough and extra strong. Uh, five wounds, four attacks on a two plus save. So he's a pretty beefy guy. Uh, he's got this Sanguine Sword with five, uh, four attacks, strength times two. So he's strength 10 on the on attack, minus three D3. So he's pretty, pretty beefy in combat. Lord of Death, roll D6 each time if it's on loses a wound, five plus is ignored. So he has a five plus Funeral Pain. Uh, no invuln save though, so 2 plus 5 plus female pain. He has a psychic hood of course, which is plus 1 to deny, and he can cast 2 powers and deny 2 powers. So it's pretty sweet. Um, so yep, he's a librarian. Pretty sweet. So he's a pretty beefy librarian um, with a 2 plus and a female pain and a toughness 5, 4 wounds. 5 wounds, so it's pretty good. Librarian Dreadnought. So... If your Dreadnought is a character, that makes it that much better um, because you can't shoot them. Uh, so Librarian Dreadnoughts, uh, some of the Space Wolf named character Dreadnoughts, uh, all these character Dreadnoughts are really uh, are quite strong, I think. Because um, of all the toughness of a Dreadnought, so T7, 8 wounds, 3 plus save, uh, only 3 attacks like a Librarian, so not like a Dreadnought. Weapon skills 2 plus, um, and, but of course he's a character, so you can't shoot him. Which is pretty sweet. So they all have Psychic Hood, so add one to deny. And uh, they all know two powers and can attempt to deny one. So, um, and then it comes with a Furioso Force Halberd and a Furioso Fist, which are all kind of strong weapons. So the Fist is, it will have three attacks, uh, strength 12 minus three, straight three damage. Uh, the halberd is strength 10, minus 4, and straight 3 damage. So, from what I've been hearing, those weapons are certainly better than they used to be. Let's have a look. So, the Furioso Fist is the same, times 2, uh, minus 3, 3 damage. Um, but the Furioso Halberd, just trying to find it here. Uh, just right at this moment, I can't find it, so no worries, but um, still, that's a pretty strong weapon. And, and you can replace it with flamers or melty guns. Uh, you can replace the storm bolter with a flamer or melty guns. So, close combat, uh, psychic powered character dreadnought, that's pretty sweet. Uh, standard librarian, I don't think it's any different from a space marine librarian. 
Primaris Librarian, Librarian Terminator Armor, Astarath. So Astarath is, um, I think he's the crazy guy with the axe and the black hair. Uh, anyway, so twos all across, strength four, toughness four, five wounds, four attacks, two plus save. Executioner's axe is strength six in the end, minus three D3. And you do three damage instead of D3 if you roll a six. Uh, all friendly blood angels within six inches can use his leadership and automatic death company passes morale if they're within six. So is he death company? Um, he's a chaplain, but it doesn't say death company. He doesn't have the death company keyword, but of course, as we'll see later, you can give him it. Uh, so automatically pass morale, which is pretty sweet. He has a jump pack. He has the reroll fail hit rolls of one in the fight phase, like any chaplain. And he has mass of doom. Once per battle, at the start of your movement phase, he can chant the Mass of Doom. Roll D6. On a 1, unit suffers a mortal wound. <laughs> uh, oh, roll a D6 for each Blood Angel's infantry unit within 6 inches of him. On a 1, they get a mortal wound. On a 2 to 5, you add 1 to the hit rolls in the fight phase. Pretty sweet. And Vessel of Sanguinis on a 6, add 1 to hit rolls. Uh, and 4 plus Invalm. And Astaroth has a 4 plus inbound. So 2 plus, 4 plus, plus beefy. Um, that seems pretty good. I mean, you'll lose a guy or you'll get pretty buffed. Um, adding one to adding one is always better. It, it is pretty good. So Lamartes is the chaplain specifically for Death Company. He has the Death Company um, uh, keyword. And uh, he is, again, twos across. Well, BS is only 3 plus. Uh, four wounds, uh, five attacks, three plus save, and a four plus invuln. And he has the Blood Crozius, which is strength six minus two D3 damage. So he has the Black Rage. So uh, none of these guys have the Black Rage. Only Death Company gets the Black Rage, I believe. I think Black Rage is uh, just Death Company, and that's why they're painted black. But So he has the Black Rage. Um, and it's Fury Unbound, reroll failed charge rolls and all failed hit rolls for fight phase for Death Company. So he is the HQ to run with Death Company. Reroll charges and reroll all hits. Um, Guardian of the Lost, all friendly Death Company units within six inches can use his leadership instead of their own, which is pretty sweet. He's leadership nine. Jump pack, and that's it. Um, so he's a pretty good character if you're running Death Company because he gives you you know, re-rolls and re-roll charges too. Um, pretty sweet, as well as the leadership buff. I like you. Here you have just your standard chaplain in Terminator armor, Primaris chaplain, normal chaplain, and Tycho. So Tycho is a death company. Who's Tycho? Tycho the Lost. Um, he's armed with Bloodsong, Dead Man's Hand, and only one Tycho. Uh, so he's twos across, four, four, five, four attacks, two plus armor. No, uh, he has a four plus invuln as well. He has the black rage because he's death company. And abhor the beast. Tycho the Lost may make D3 additional attacks if he's within one inch of any enemy orcs. Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't see any reason to play Tycho the Lost. Basically, I mean, just use Lamartes. Doesn't buff anybody. Uh, standard Captain, Captain Tycho. So is this guy the same as Tycho? Oh, okay. So there must be a fluff reason for Tycho the Lost and Captain Tycho. I think Captain Tycho is before he let the Black Rage take him over, and then Tycho the Lost is after Black Rage. Eh, anybody? You can illuminate me on that. Uh, so Captain Tycho's there. He's basically the same, except uh, he reroll hit rolls of one like a captain. Still has the uh, orc thing. All right, let's keep going. Captains, 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 lots of captains. Captains, captains, lieutenant. So they get the new lieutenant that the Space Marines get. And of course, there's the new lieutenant model. Yep, and so they're no different from normal uh, lieutenants in the Space Marine Codex. Tech Marines, tax squads, intercessors, scout squads, all the same as Space Marines. So, Sanguinary Guard. Let's see if we can... Uh, Pull this up on the old index here. Sanguinary Guard. So Sanguinary Guard used to be 10 power, now they're 8. Uh, the stat line is obviously a standard marine line, except that they have 2 plus save, 2 attacks, and 2 wounds. Um, 
They are uh, jump pack guys, and so they can deep strike. And uh, they all have this uh, Angelus bolt gun and the N Carmine sword, which is unchanged from the codex. So the Angelus bolt gun is a decent weapon, 12 inch range, but assault 2, 4, minus 1, 1. And the sword is your standard strength 4, but minus 3 D3, so it's kind of like a power sword. Um, so, uh, and of course, uh, they can take the death mask and they can take inferno pistols all any of them can take plasma pistol or inferno pistols Which are little melt pistols and any of them can replace a sword with an axe or a power fist um, So we'll see if their uh, their rules are exactly the same But we'll see if their points have changed and they can reroll failed hit rolls uh, Within six inches of a warlord. So they're supposed to be like the guard, but they don't have a guard uh, rule uh, they don't have, you know, able to take wounds for anybody. So they're not, like, really guard, but they do get stronger when they're around the Warlord. And they have the Death Mask and the Jump Pack. And the Ancient, the Sanguinary Ancient, uh, has the Banner. And the Blood Angel's Banner gives you uh, plus one leadership and reroll wound rolls of one in the fight phase. Um, which is cool. Uh... Because it buffs all Blood Angels, not just uh, Sanguinary Guard, because he's a Sanguinary Guard. But the Lieutenant also gives you reroll ones. And um, all the time, not just in the fight phase. So you might as well just run a Lieutenant. But of course he's Jump Pack, so uh, can we take a Jump Pack on the Lieutenant? Let me see. So the Lieutenant uh, can take a Jump Pack, yes. Awesome. Okay, um, so that's the banner for him, and he otherwise has all the Sanguinary Guard rules. Apothecary and Aggressors. Sanguinary Novitiate. Uh, so this is like, let's see, he has an Arthesium. So he's like a just a normal Apothecary, I guess. Different from the... Uh, priest, because he doesn't have the chalice. He's just a straight-up apothecary. Death Company Dreadnought. Alright, Death Company Dreadnought's pretty sweet. He's not a character, though. But he is a Dreadnought that is the Death Company. The difference is, uh, let's see. So he's up to, he's got the standard uh, Dreadnought um, stats. So he has 8 wounds, 7 toughness, 3 plus save. Uh, he does not have a, an invuln. And, of course, he comes with 2 fists. Um, and this Furioso Fist is, is confusing. So this Furioso Fist is different from the Furioso Fist that's on the Librarian Dreadnought. So the Librarian Dreadnought Furioso Fist is times 2 strength, minus 3, 3, with no other bonuses. And this Furioso Fist is times 2 strength, minus 3, 3. Um, but if you have two of them, you can reroll hit rolls, which is pretty sweet. And there's also the Blood Talons, which can sub out his fists for Blood Talons, and that gives you Strength 10 instead of 12, minus 2 instead of minus 3, but still straight up 3 damage and can reroll failed hit and wound rolls. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going with the Blood Talons, to be honest. Rerolling failed hits and wounds, it's pretty sweet. Uh, and of course the Death Company uh, Dreadnought can use this Magna Grapple. So the Death Company Dreadnought of course is Black Rage, so on the charge or if char uh, on the charge it's going to get plus one attack. Um, and uh, that's pretty sweet. Um, and it can s consolidate six inches instead of three, which is also very sweet. And it has this grapple. It only works on a vehicle that adds two to its charge roll, so that's pretty cool too. Alright, it's a pretty scary Dreadnought. And Death Company. So, if I was going to play Blood Angels, I would play a whole army of Death Company. Because that's, that's something that does appeal to me in terms of, like, a salty jump pack guys just going in and wrecking face. Um, yeah, I, I do like that. If I was going to play Blood Angels, I'd play Death Company. Um, so, these guys are just standard Marines, except they have an extra attack. You can take them up to 15 guys. They just come with Bolt Pistol and Chainsword as standard. But you can replace the Bolt Pistol with anything like a Hand Flamer, Inferno Pistol, Plasma Pistol, Power Axe, Power Fist, Power Maul, Power Sword. And you can replace the Chainsword with Power Axe, Power Fist, Power Maul, Power Sword, or Thunder Hammer. So you could have guys uh, rocking, uh, you know, two Infernal Pistols. Uh, no. 
you can have two power acts or double fisting or double power sorting or double power mauling. That's pretty sweet. And then also you can have a thunder hammer. <laughs> That's sweet. So they don't come with jump packs as standard. You do have to pay extra for them. Um, and they have jump pack assault and black rage. And we'll see how many points they are at the end. But uh, so these guys are kind of better than normal jump pack guys because they have an extra attack and they have you know unlimited weapon options basically. And then they have the black rage, so they end up having three attacks each if uh, if you charge. And there's as we can see, there's a lot of characters that buff Death Company. We roll we roll hits and uh, automatically pass morale. Pretty sweet. Servitors, Terminators, Ancients, so I won't go over these, but these are fairly standard, like Space Marine Book. Company Champions, Veterans, and Reavers. Terminators and Terminators, we'll see if they came down in price, but if they haven't, I'm not sure we're going to see any more Terminators because of this codex than we had before. Cataphracty and Tartaros, as they said, we would be getting access to those. Vanguard Vets, Stern Guard Vets, Normal Dreadnought, the Furioso Dreadnought. So the Furioso Dreadnought is basically a standard Dreadnought stats-wise, but it comes with the uh, with the Furioso Fists, which we've already seen on the Death Company Dreadnought. And um, the one thing it can take uh, that seems to be exclusive is the Frag Cannon. So the frag cannon is assault 2d6 at 8 inch range. So flamer, flamer, uh, assault 2d6 flamer. Uh, so auto hits 6 minus 1, 1. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, that is definitely sweet. If you can get this guy in range and alive, he's going to do some work with that. And you don't want to charge this guy. Or charge him from outside of 8 inches. All right, Contemptor, Redemptor. Assault Squad, Bike Squad, Bike Squad, Land Speeder, Scout Bikes, Inceptors, Devs, Predator, Hellblasters, uh, Ball Predator. So the Ball Predator, let's see, is a standard stats as a normal Predator. Um, it's equipped with a twin assault cannon, so I believe that that's something a normal Predator can't have. I, don't know, I run my predators normally just uh, normally I run my predators straight up with last cannons. So let's see. Normal predator can take auto cannon, uh, heavy bolters, hunter killer. Yeah. So a normal predator can't take uh, twin assault cannons. So that uh, so that's pretty cool. Kind of like a predator razorback. But uh, and then it can take two heavy bolters or two heavy flamers. So we probably end up taking the heavy bolters. Um, and it can take this Flamestorm Cannon instead of the Assault Cannon. And the Flamestorm Cannon is a D6 Flamer, 6 minus 2, 2. Which is okay, but it's only 8 inch range. Um, at least things like the Hellhound and the Immolators have extra range on the Flamers, which makes them, uh, which makes them cool. But, uh, so yeah, I don't know, I don't know if the, uh, Ball Predator is a big deal. You can't switch it out for Laz or anything like that, so you probably switch it with, just keep the Assault Cannons. Um, unless your aim is to run them up, which you might, given the rest of the army is going to be doing that. Okay, they get access to all the Space Marine vehicles now, Hunter, Stalker, um, Land Raiders, Land Raiders, all the usual stuff. Rhino, Razorbacks, Drop Pods, Land Speeder Storm, Repulsor Tank, Storm Hawk. So that's a new one, I think. They did now get access to the Storm Hawk. They still have access to the Storm Raven. And the Storm Talon, which I don't know if they had before, but now they do. Okay, so those are the data sheets. Let's go on to the points. First of all, I like to skip to the points, of course. Let's go to the index. All right. So HQ wise, uh, so the points should be consistent with chapter approved because it, it wasn't in chapter approved. So, but in terms of what all the Space Marine stuff has come down to, should be the same. Uh, let's just see stuff that's exclusive to Blood Angels. So uh, Primaris Lieutenant, uh, 
So the, the new lieutenants, how much are the new lieutenants? The new lieutenants are 60. Uh, of course, they weren't in this book. And with jump pack 78, so it's a reasonable HQ there. And the Sanguinary Priest is 69, and it used to be 69. So it hasn't changed. Um, let's see, all the uh, named characters are all exactly the same. None of those characters have changed. So let's see, Lamartis, who's the Death Company Chaplain, 129 for reroll charges and reroll hits. Um, that's a good bargain. So I think the obvious choice for Death Company is to run him with Lamartis. All the characters are actually pretty good. And they all have these overlapping auras in the typical sort of Space Marine faction. Um, I don't know if Dante's worth 215 points, though, uh, just to give you Chapter Master rerolls because there's so many things that give you rerolls. Um, Mephiston's obviously extremely strong for 145 points. Um, yeah, those would be the two standouts for me, just having read through the data sheets. Um, Mephiston and Lamartis as relatively well priced. Of course, intercessors and aggressors and all those things came down in price. Hellblasters, let me see. I love me some Hellblasters, maybe. Hellblasters, 18 points apiece, so that's pretty good. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see. Death Company is 17 points a man, and they were 17 before. So Death Company have not changed in price, so they're still kind of expensive, but probably a lot more useful now with all the um, uh, stratagems and stuff like that. And a Death Company Dreadnought was 90, and it used to be 128. Wow. So the Death Company Dreadnought came down like... Uh, 38 points which is crazy because uh, it's quite strong and now it's only 90 points um, that is sweet and death company with jump packs is 20 points and a normal assault squad is um, 13 points uh, with the jump pack 16 points so for four points extra you're getting black rage you're getting an extra attack you're getting the flexibility of loadouts and you're getting buffs with guys like Lamartis and stuff. Um, and then stratagem-wise, there's almost certainly going to be stratagems in here for Death Company and stratagems in here for just generic. So you'll get access to both, whereas if you're just a jump pack, you won't get access to Death Company uh, stratagems. So I think that's a no-brainer. I'm not sure why you would take Assault Squad over Death Company unless you're really strapped for points. Um, yeah, that's pretty sick. Uh, let's see, Furioso is 80 points, so the Furioso is even cheaper than the Death Company. Uh, Redemptor, Reavers, Sanguine Guard, 20 points each, so that's down from 22. So Sanguine Guard is a little bit cheaper, cheaper, and uh, yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, Ball Predator. Uh, do, 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 do. Ball Predator 107 is now 100, so the Ball Predator went down 7 points. Everything else is standard Space Marine price. And uh, yeah, that's it. In terms of cost of war gear and Jealous Bolt Gun, uh, three points. Uh, down from nine points. So that Bolt Gun that you're putting is down, uh, down from nine to three. That's pretty cool, crazy. Of course, it's got all the, the um, chapter approved levels for assault cannons and stuff like that, like the other books. Uh, let's see what else is in here. I think that's mostly what's important. Inferno Pistol is 9. It used to be... Oh, wow. So the Inferno Pistol used to be 20 points. And now it's only 9 points. <laughs> that's crazy. 20 points. I wouldn't pay 20 points for an Inferno Pistol. That's even more than a Melted Gun. Um, but uh, Inferno Pistol is only 9 points now, which is, which is a big reduction. And... Um, Yep, let's keep looking at some more weapon profiles here. Last Talon, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think uh, not much else is a lot of difference. Uh, Blood Talons were 65 and they still are 65. And Chain Fists and... Uh, Let's see, the Encarmine weapons, Encarmine Axe is 16, it used to be 16, Encarmine Sword is 12, down from 13, and yeah, Furioso Fists 
Uh, same price, 40 or 50 for the pair. Uh, and Halberd is still zero. Okay, and then the changes to Power Fists and Thunder Hammers in sync with the Spaceman Codex. Magna Grapples, five points, which used to be. Death Mask is two points. Okay, so not a huge change in the point values. Um, so, which is probably good because you didn't get more expensive and you gain a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff you might ask. Well, that's coming up. Let's have a look. Anyone else notice that uh, when you get your codex, even if it's the first time you open it, if you were just to throw your codex and have it land open, it will open on this splash page, always. And then that is the beginning of the uh, rules and stratagems and warlord traits section. Anyone else notice that? It happens with every single codex that I have. If you were to just randomly flip through and let the book fall open to a page, it always seems to be this one. Isn't that weird? Maybe it's just how they bind it. I don't know. Okay, so... So, of course, um, the sort of chapter tactic that they get uh, in Battleforged, uh, troop units, and any detachment game, Defenders of Humanity, which, of course, is OBSEC. And the Red Thirst applies to any infantry, biker, and dreadnought unit. So just like the other chapter tactics. And the Red Thirst is in any turn in which a unit with this ability charged or was charged or made a heroic intervention, you add one to its wound rolls in the fight phase. Wow. That is strong. So we're not saying that's even better than the strength going up. To just straight up add one to wound means you're at worst wounding on a three, uh, at worst wounding on a five, um, and, and a lot of times wounding on threes or twos, even for your kind of strength four models. That your scouts now become little combat monsters. Um, that's strong. Plus one to wound uh, is strong. In the fight phase, of course, charge or charged, but so far from what we can see, the point of this army is to end up in the fight phase. Um, which of course is very fluffy for these guys, but so far it seems like the book is really geared towards getting these guys into combat and wrecking phase in combat. And so even if you took Death Company with just chain swords, they're at worst wounding on fives, often wounding on fours, threes, sometimes even twos. Um, that's pretty strong. So two attacks, then they get an extra attack for charging, then they get an extra attack. They could, for chain, chain swords, I mean, yeah, they could end up with four, five, six attacks, those guys. Pretty hardcore. All right, let's look at the stratagems. Stratagems really is where the codexes are giving people their power and their, and their flavor. So uh, let's see. So they have the uh, typical kind of relic stratagem that everybody gets. Forlorn Fury, uh, so Blood Angel Stratagem, uh, immediately move at the start of the first battle round, but before the turn has begun, immediately move your Death Company Infantry and advance if you want. Um, you can only use this stratagem once. Wow. So that's a scout move for Death Company, uh, which gives them a lot of flexibility because, of course, uh, most of the time people will run them with jump packs, I guess, but if you happen to not, that's a free move for you right there. Uh, so that's pretty sweet. 2 CP, I guess, like with all books, you're going to want a lot of CP. You're going to need at least double battalion or try and get a cheap guard brigade or some something in there that's going to give you your command points because it looks like you're going to be spending command points left, right, and center. Um, so that's going to definitely be a consideration for Blood Angels players and all Marine players, to be honest. Um, Behold the Golden Host. Uh, increases Death Mask, so, you know, no big deal. Aspect Scan, of course, is your Interceptor. Um, and Death Visions of Sanguinius for 1 CP. Blood Angels Captain, Chaplain, or Lieutenant gains the Death Company keyword and the Black Rage ability for the duration of the battle. Uh, that's awesome, so you use that when you're making your army list. So... Yeah, because Death Company, Black Rage, and all the buffers, if you give uh, Captain, Chaplain, or Lieutenant. So you give it to your Lieutenant, um, that's pretty sweet. Because, of course, you, you like your Lieutenant giving you reroll ones to wound. 
Uh, Wisdom of the Ancients for a CP. Use the stratagem at the start of any phase. Select a Dreadnought and reroll hit rolls of one. All right, not that great. And save your CP for other things. Strike of the Archangels. Affects Terminators. Reroll hitting for two CP. Not worth it. Um, tactical flexibility. Uh, that's the combat squad stratagem. Cluster mines. That's a scout biker stratagem. Upon wings of fire, one CP. Use this stratagem in your movement phase before moving a Blood Angels jump back unit. Remove the unit and set it up anywhere on the battlefield at the end of the phase more than nine inches away. That's strong. Um, so you don't move them. It's before they move. They just boop and drop somewhere else. So you can get out of combat with that without having to uh, fall back. You can hide in the beginning of your turn and end up in somebody's face at the end of the turn. Um, you can go last minute grab an objective. You can assault different flanks. I mean, that's a very strong stratagem. Um, very strong. Wow, I like that one. That's sweet. Uh, there's the orbital bombardment, of course, that all space marines have. Masterful marksmanship. For Stern Guard, same thing. The Data Lake Telemetry is the same thing with the Whirlwinds and the Land Speeders. Lucifer Pattern Engines. Use this stratagem before advancing with the Blood Angels vehicle. Um, other than Dreadnought or Fly, increases move by 6 inches. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, Empiric Channeling, same as the Space Marines one, so lets you uh, cast better. Kill Shot, same thing. Line Breaker Bombardment, same thing. Hellfire Shells, same thing. Uh, Descent of Angels. For 2 CP, use this stratagem before making a charge roll with a Blood Angels Jump Pack that was set up on the battlefield this turn. Roll 3d6 instead of 2d6. Wow. So that's 2 CP to basically guarantee that charge. A lot of these guys have reroll charges. Death Company has reroll charges from Lamartes. Um, so if you reroll charge 3d6, you're like always going to make that charge. Um, that's pretty sweet. Your 9 inch charge now becomes very manageable like the Eversir uh, for 2 CP. So you need your CPs, man. And then you could Wings of Fire, leave combat, jump somewhere else, 3d6 charge. You could really um, you could really do some work with that. That's 3 CP. Red Rampage. Use this stratagem in the fight phase. Add d3 to attacks of a Blood Angel's character. Could be decent. Like you really need to kill somebody with uh, you know your character. Armor of Contempt. Um, oh, that's the Feel No Pain for Vehicle stratagem. Flak Missile, same thing. Vengeance for Sanguinius, 1 CP. Use the stratagem when a Blood Angels unit from your army is chosen to attack in the fight phase. On 6 plus, uh, it can make an extra attack if it was targeting Heretic Astartes units. Uh, and on a 4, this works on a 4 plus if you're fighting against Black Legion. So this is basically exploding 6s against Chaos. So there's your anti-Chaos flare. <laughs> and anti-anti-Black Legion. I don't know what the history is between Blood Angels and Black Legion. But, uh, so if you're fighting Chaos, you get exploding 6s. If you're fighting Black Legion, you get exploding 4s. Which is pretty sick, considering the number of attacks. Honor the chapter, of course, is the ability to fight again. Uh, for a second time. Uh, which is always sweet, but again, another 3 CP, so you're sp adding up a lot of CPs here, but always a threat uh, for any uh, for any Space Marine uh, army can do that to you. Only in death does duty end. Use this strategy when a Blood Angel's character from your army is slain. That model summons the strength for one more attack. Um, yeah, this strategy is not cumulative with the banner. Yeah, so uh, that's a typical kind of... Uh, the, the character strategy. Okay, and that's it. Um, so I gotta say, uh, other than the standard Space Marine stratagems, the Blood Angel specific stuff is very focused around combat. I mean, you got the ability to leave and deep strike somewhere else, and movement based. You got the combat ones and the charging 3d6, uh, fighting again, um, extra attacks. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Um, actually, I was thinking that there would be more, because a lot of these are just Space Marine stratagems, but I guess not. I thought there'd be, like, another page, but there's not. There's going on to Warlord Traits. Alright, Warlord Traits. Speed of the Primarch. Always choose your Warlord to fight first, even if he didn't charge. Okay, that's decent. Artisan of War. Add one to damage. Uh, this cannot be a Relic of Ball. 
Okay, I guess that's okay. Not that great. Soul Warden, attempt to resist one psychic power with your Warlord in each of your opponent's psychic phase. Not that great. Heroic Bearing, friendly Blood Angels units pass morale automatically. That could be okay, but not that great. Gift of Foresight, roll a d6 each time your Warlord loses a wound. Rerolling rolls of 1 on a 6, that wound is ignored. If it has Black Rage, they instead ignore wounds on a 5 instead of 6. Okay, so that's okay if you're running like a, that's good if you're running Death Company, I guess. And uh, Selfless Valor, your Warlord can perform heroic interventions within 6 inches. Okay. Um, who, which one would I pick, eh? Hey? I don't know. I guess it's a toss up between, if you're running a Death Company, I think you just pick that one. That makes your Black Rage better. Um... Otherwise, the speed of the Primarch is good. Adding a damage is good. You know, none of them are auto-takes. And of course, this table tells you if you take a name character's Warlord, they already have their assigned uh, Warlord traits. Okay, the Relics of Baal. So the Hammer replaces a Thunder Hammer, and it's basically a straight-up 3 damage, uh, which is Thunder Hammer, which it was already. Strength times two minus three AP three damage. Isn't that the uh, isn't that a normal Thunder Hammer profile? Anyway, um, Angel's Wing jump pack model only reroll fail charges and cannot be overwatched. Oh, that's good. That's good. You are an army that wants to get into combat. If your character is rocking this, they can make it for sure. I mean, if they're Death Company, they already get to reroll. So, but even if they're not, I mean, that makes them. A good on the charge. Um, you could always ensure it by making your uh, stratagem for 2 CP, but you probably want to save that for the big killer unit. But they can't overwatch him. He ties up the unit, and now your 15 death company comes in right behind him. Uh, that's a sweet relic. I like that. Uh, Veritas Vitae. So if your army's battle forged uh, on a 5 plus, you gain a command point. Okay, so that's everybody's getting a relic or a warlord trait or something that lets them regain command points. Uh, that might be vital to use uh, considering how heavy you're going to be on the command points. Uh, Galleon's Staff. This replaces a force staff. Uh, add one to psychic tests. Okay. Archangel's Shard, Power Sword or Master Crafted Power Sword. Um, extra damage against monsters and demons. Okay. Not so great. Ancient model. This is the uh, standard and uh, so this gives everybody a uh, 5 plus funeral pain within 6 inches okay that's alright not great I think you take the angel's wing man that fits in the best with the way that you probably want to play this army okay the sanguinary discipline is their psychic powers so some of these we already know uh, let's just crack open uh, blood angels here so they already had uh, Blood Boils, so that's a Warp Charge 6 on a 2d6, Visible Enemy Unit. Um, 2d6 exceeds their toughness, they get d3 Mortal Wounds. It is more than double the toughness, they have 3 Mortal Wounds, so that's decent. Um, so what Blood Boil used to be is a Warp Charge 5, select a Visible Enemy Unit within 18 inches, and now it's 6 inches, so it's way shorter. And you roll three dice, and they get a mortal wound for each result that exceeds their toughness. Uh, whereas now, it is 2d6, and just d3 mortal wounds, or auto 3 if it's double. Hmm. So that's an interesting balancing there. So they made it a lot shorter range. Uh, and probably, depending on who you're targeting. So if you're just targeting a... Uh, character, because of course you can ex you can uh, pick a character. Doesn't say nearest, just says visible. And then the character is you know toughness four, toughness five on a two d six. Um, that's pretty. You can have good chance of doubling that and doing three mortal wounds. Whereas before you would roll three d six and exceed the toughness by five, six, seven, eight, nine points. And they suffer the mortal wound for each result. And that was 18 inches. And only a warp charge value of 5. Wow. So this spell got toned down for sure. It got toned down big time. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, so 
Anyway, the first power is Quickening. Quickening is War Charge 7. Add 3 to your advance and charge rolls for the Psyker. And D3 additional attacks in the fight phase until... Okay, so as if just adding 3 to advance and charge rolls wasn't enough, you also get D3 extra attacks. Uh, so you, the Librarian Dreadnought rocking 3 attacks. Now he's rocking D3 plus 3 attacks. He gets to advance an extra 3, um, but he gets to uh, add 3 to his charge roll. And uh, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> that's certainly something they can buff themselves with. Uh, Unleash Rage. Uh, Warp Charge 6. Select a friendly Blood Angels unit within 12 inches until the start of the next second phase. Add 1 to the attack. So it's another plus 1 to attack, uh, which is crazy. Uh, it used to be the same. So that's not changed from the index. So it's another plus 1 attack for your 15 Death Company. Uh, I think they're up to 5 or 6 attacks now. Shield of Sanguinius, uh, Warp Charge value of 6, and uh, 5 plus Invuln for a unit within 12. And that is uh, used to be 4 plus. So that's been nerfed. That was a 4 plus, and now it's a 5 plus. 5 plus is still okay. 4 plus is obviously better. But um, uh, Blood Lance, uh, Warp Charge 6, visible enemy model within 12 inches. I draw a line, and a D6 for each model. Each roll, five plus, uh, five plus, you get a mortal wound. So that's not that great. Uh, these line powers are not that good. Very situational. And wings of Sanguinius. Uh, so warp charge value of five. If manifested, the Psyker can immediately move as if it was the movement phase. But the move is now increased to 12 inches and you can fly. Uh, which until the start of the next until the start of your next psychic phase. So that means the next, your next turn in the movement phase, he still has 12 inch fly move. Uh, Cause that's before the next psychic phase. And also that means he can immediately, um, he can shoot if he fell back. Oh, so you, you fall back in the movement phase, you cast this, now all of a sudden you're fly, so in your shooting phase you can shoot. Sweet. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, you can also reroll fail charges. <laughs> That's a pretty sweet power. Um, your Librarian Dreadnought just becomes a 12-inch Flying Dreadnought, um, which is pretty sweet, who can reroll charges. Wow. Uh, so I think these two powers are pretty good. Quickening, Wings of Sanguinius, and then you would consider taking Blood, Bowl, Blood Boil or Unleash Rage if you want to buff, um, buff your guys. All right, pretty sweet, uh, sweet psychic powers. And, of course, Tactical Objectives. All right, well, that's the Blood Angels book. Um, I like it. I really like the the feel that if you want to play this army to its best potential, you better like combat. Um, you're not going to be, not a lot of bodies, but hard hitting, lots of ways of moving around the table, lots of fast moving units, long charges, uh, hard hitting in combat character dreadnoughts that are librarians and can fly and oh it's it's really quite a fun sounding codex actually i'm very tempted to place paper to to play some blood angels it's certainly something to consider splashing in uh so if i take my guard list and i take the scions out as my deep striking component and put in like one squad of death company or something you know that that's something that definitely could be considered as a harassing unit um, and to kill chaff and things like that, definitely something to consider. Or as a companion to my Dark Angels, who are coming out next week, and who knows what they're, that's going to hold. So play like an angelic host list with Dark and Blood Angels kind of Christmas list. Um, so definitely a cool codex. I like it. I don't know. I think the meta is too heavy in screens and shooting for this army to be top, I think. Um, but it sure sounds like a hell of a lot of fun to play. Um, and the other thing is when you're fighting every turn, so your turn and your opponent's turn, the games do get bogged down and you're having a lot of attacks and consolidates and moves and pile-ins. It's a lot, adds a lot of extra time to your games. Um, so we'll see how it pans out. I'm sure some people are going to make this codex work, obviously. Um, I'm not sure it's going to displace Guard or uh, Tyranids or Chaos or Eldar uh, from the top, but I think it would be a hell of a fun to play and it may be a good uh, ally force. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that read-along. Of course, uh, next week we'll feature the Dark Angels Codex, my baby. 
Uh, we'll have a presentation for you of the limited edition along with a look at the new dice that GW has made because I'll be ordering the Dark Angels dice. And uh, we'll also look at the new lieutenant model for the Dark Angels. Literally the only smiling person in the 40k universe. So thank you very much for watching guys and we'll catch you next time.